Hello there, my name is David Hillier and I am going to be giving a brief video today about capital investment decisions and specifically about incremental cash flows. In this video I will be speaking about the cash flows that you should include in a capital budgeting analysis and those cash flows or figures or accounting figures that you should not include. This is the basis of all capital budgeting decisions. Any experience I've had in advising companies has focused primarily on decisions relating to the specific cash flows that should be included. If you don't include the cash flows that should, uh, or the relevant cash flows, you'll end up getting um, an erroneous estimate for your net present value or your internal rate of return. In finance, we say rubbish in, rubbish out. You may be using the most complex methods. You may be using methods that are theoretically correct. But if you put rubbish values in uh, figures that are not correct, then it doesn't matter how good your method is. You're going to end up uh, having just rubbish um, conclusions or rubbish values. So it's absolutely key that the figures that you include in your capital budgeting analysis are the correct figures. So in this video I am going to be talking about the different types of cash flows that you may experience in your job, in your analysis and whether you should include those or whether you shouldn't include those. So there are five main areas that we need to discuss in this uh, video and we're going to go through each of these in turn. Some are fairly self-explanatory but others are actually probably a little bit difficult. Um, uh, probably, you know, maybe need, need to take a, a bit of thought. This is all covered in my, my finance books. Um, I'm using the PowerPoint slides for uh, corporate finance. But the material is also covered in fundamentals of corporate finance. So uh, let's look at each each area. We're going to start off by looking at accounting figures. Unless we're using the average accounting return method, then you should always use cash flows. Do not use accounting figures. The reason is that accounting figures are not real. Earnings is not real. It's a measure of performance based on past uh, experience. Or no, past experience. Sorry, someone's trying to phone me here. Um, give me a minute. So it's um, a measure based on past performance that incorporates things like, um, a, like depreciation of assets. Depreciation is, of assets is not a real cash flow. It's a measure to represent the reduction in the value of an asset. But that depreciation appears as an expense in the income statement, which then affects your net income. Now, in finance, we say do not use these because your depreciation policy affects your uh, net income. Other areas like uh, accruals. Uh, is another area that's where you are um, using some type of asset and the bill lasts more than one period so you've got to accrue the usage to accurately and fairly reflect the usage within a certain period. All of these things have no cash flow impact but they do have an, an income impact so unless you're using the average accounting return then uh, you should avoid accounting figures as much as possible. So, moving on to uh, an example here, and this all this example does is fairly straightforward. But all this example does is is um, just separate cash from accounting. So what we've got, we've got a company that's paid one million euros in cash uh, for a building. Okay, now this is an immediate outflow, so the money goes away uh, immediately. We're going to be using reducing balance depreciation, and I, I covered this in uh, my video 
on average accounting return so if you look at my youtube channel you'll see average accounting return and you'll see how to estimate and use depreciating uh, reducing balance but it's 20 percent reducing balance so every year we're going to calculate depreciation of 20 percent of the residual value and so in the current year we have 20 percent of the 1 million investment which is 200,000 euros so that is a depreciation expense that is an accounting figure so our earnings will fall by 200,000 euros as a result of that depreciation expense however it is not a cash flow it has no impact on your bank balance it has no impact on the decisions that you make with respect to cash it is an accounting figure okay so what is relevant the relevant cash flow here is the 1 million euros you should ignore the depreciation uh, figure of 200,000 euros that isn't a cash flow now I will be talking in the next video that I make about why depreciation indirectly affects cash flows and that is through tax but uh, for now you what I would say is do not include the um, do not include depreciation directly in any of your cash flow analysis or your investment appraisal analysis so key message always use cash flows and only use incremental cash flows and this is what we're going to talk about now what is incremental cash flow i spoke about incre incremental rate of return internal rate of return before um but it's what we're going to do now is talk about incremental cash flows it's the same idea it's the difference in cash flow between what happens as a result of the project and what would have happened anyway so let's talk about sunk costs first of all sunk costs are all of those costs that are incurred prior to you making a decision so if you've undertaken some type of marketing analysis if you've undertaken research and development this is already spend that's been made and that research and development the marketing analysis will inform your decision to go forward but the expenditure has incurred that has been already incurred and the expenditure will be there whether you um, decide on the project or you don't decide on the project so that means that the sunk cost is irrelevant for your decision you've spent the money but the decision to go forward should you take a project or not well it's invariant to the the sunk costs that have already occurred so what we see is is you know do not include any sunk costs in your analysis and that's a, that's a key thing and you'll find that in decision making in organizations uh, organizations they like to say well you've done you've carried out all this work in this area and you know so that has to be included in your analysis and what we would say is in finance say no don't because whether you undertake this project or not that cost has already been incurred so forget about the past think about the future here's an example here um, so looking at potential investment the companies paid a consulting firm firm uh, 100k to undertake a marketing analysis it was made last year but it's directly related to this potential investment why because the analysis was undertaken to make to ask was this worthwhile or not now should you include this well although the the cost was related to this project the cost is already incurred so you do not include this in your analysis you ignore it so don't include it what about opportunity costs now opportunity costs is, is something which is slightly different um best thing to look at opportunity best way to look at opportunity cost is think about a journey you know you're going to go on a journey and you're thinking of taking a bus but you decide to take a taxi so you've got the cost of the taxi but given that you were going to go uh, by bus you're no longer going to incur the cost of using the bus so in a, in a way 
you should say, well, if we were going to incur the cost of, of, you, of the bus anyway, but we're now taking a taxi, the decision analysis should just be on the incremental cash flow, the difference between the value of the taxi and the, the value of the bus fare. Now, that's a silly example, and it just came to me in my head, so I, I could have come up with a, a better one. But this is where incremental cash flow is key. What you have to do is you have to look, if you're thinking about, let's say, a warehouse, you've already got the warehouse, you rent that warehouse out, and you get money from rent from the warehouse. But then you decide as a part of your project that you're going to use the warehouse to put machinery in and to start producing goods. Well, you will earn income and you will get cash flow from producing those goods, but you lose cash flow because you can no longer rent it out. So that loss of cash flow, that loss of rent is important because you're losing cash. So you need to include that. And that's why we, we talk about opportunity costs. Opportunity costs are very relevant and should be included. And we have this example here. And this is an example of uh, an empty warehouse in Salamanca. And instead of the, you know, using the, the empty warehouse, uh, what they're going to do in here is that they could sell that warehouse. So you've got a decision here. Do we fill the warehouse up with e-readers or do we sell the warehouse? So the loss of money from selling the warehouse is an opportunity cost. And since it's an opportunity cost, it needs to be included in the analysis. And so the analysis needs to actually have a, a negative cash flow at the very beginning of, of your, of your uh, cash flow analysis because you are foregoing the opportunity to sell your warehouse. So you should be including that. The next thing is side effects. And side effects, the best way to think about this is to think about when a telephone company or like Apple or Samsung or HTC decide to release a new model of phone. Now, you could say that the app, you know, like I've I've seen news where they say Apple sales are record breaking. They they're selling millions of, of units. But the fact was, and and then they, they they talk about the new product is selling millions of units. But if we were going to be looking at the an analysis of the value created by introducing the new product, whether that's a new phone or any new version of uh, software, for example. What you have to take into account is that people who would be buying your f a phone from Apple, they would be buying the, the older model. because But now that you're introducing a new model, they wouldn't buy the old model and they would be buying the new model. So you're actually eroding the sales of your other products. And that is a side effect of bringing in a new product or a new service. And so you have to include that. You have to include the lost sales. And so when we talk about incremental cash flows, what we do is we say, well, what would the sales have been if we don't introduce a new product? We don't go forward with the project. And what are the sales if we do go forward with the project? And we use the incremental cash flow, the difference between the sales of the new product and the old product. And that is the key cash flow. That is the key cash flow because that is what really is happening or the change in cash flows as a result of your project. So that is where we call what we call erosion or cannibalization. Another type of uh, side effect is a synergy or sales creation. Best way to think about that is consumables. Consumables is a really is, is a massive part now of many companies business models. Think about printer manufacturers. It used to be that printers used to cost hundreds of pounds or hundreds of euros. But now they're, they're, they're dirt cheap. They, they're very cheap. But why? Well, it's because of the consumables. It's the ink cartridges that bring in most of the money. So bringing out a new printer also increases the sales of these ink cartridges. So you have 
a synergy. And that synergy has to be incorporated in your analysis. So you might be just saying, well, we're, we're wanting to release this new printer. But you also have to say, well, okay, but that is actually going to improve uh, the sales of our, uh, our ink cartridges. Think about one of the best companies uh, for this is, uh, well, uh, you could say Microsoft. Um, you got Microsoft Windows, you have Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, but you also have the Apple products and you've got the iPhone, the iPad, the MacBook, and all the software that, uh, through the iCloud is completely integrated. So if I've got a MacBook, should I then go out and buy an Android product, uh, an Android tablet, or should I buy an iPad Air or an iPad? Well, the the fact that you know the iPad and the MacBook are synergistic would increase the sales of the iPad, and that is what happened. Like Ma MacBooks, MacBooks n were never as good sellers as PCs, but because of the iPhone and the iPad, that now people are starting to use MacBooks, and you see MacBooks everywhere now. And that is the synergistic effect. So when you're doing your own analysis, you need to think about synergies. So you should be including side effects. And look at this example. Here's one. So you've got an, a new convertible sports car. But the problem is, is that people who would have bought the existing company's SUVs, the big uh, 4x4s, they may actually shift to going for the convertible sports car. And if that is the case, then you've got an erosion of sale in the SUV and you've uh, that offsets any sales in the, the sports car. So that is a side effect you should be include. Uh, you should be including this. Why is that saying no? Um, are all sales and profits from... Let me just go back here to see what that's saying. Because uh, I might have just read this question wrong. Although I said it myself. Some of the customers who had purchased car or owners are all sales and profits from the new convertible sports car incremental well yes so don't believe what it says no that should be yes and i'm going to change those slides um these are incremental cash flows let's look at this particular one um you're thinking of setting up a racing car team you're going to lose money uh, from setting up this racing car team and the mpv is minus 35 million however the sponsorship and the sponsorship creates publicity and the publicity creates interest in the cars and the interest in the cars results in sales results in cash flows so although the mpv of the sponsorship is negative because you're just piling money into uh, the, the the racing team but the increase in visibility results in positive um mpv so if you you compare the the negative mpv and the positive mpv you see that there's a positive mpv of 30 million so should the company form the team of course it should uh, form the team okay and now we come on to allocated costs this is the bane of my life uh, because this is where accountants and finance people argue with each other all the time in accounting you allocate the cost of activity. So, for example, if you're using a building, the building uses electricity, uh, the accountant wants to allocate the electricity bill for the overall company to each individual project so that you're fairly reflecting the use, usage of uh, the, over, the overhead across everyone. There might be, you know, you've got, you know, the, just all the, the overhead expenses that... In accounting, you allocate to different divisions and you allocate according to some type of formula. It might be some floor space formula or uh, some designation of, of a room in terms of like how many uh, sockets does it have, electricity sockets, all these things. But the thing is, is that in finance, we would say, well, the electricity will be on in that building anyway. You know, the heating will be on in the building anyway, unless you're going to cut off heating in different parts. Uh, you know, you, basically that cash flow is going to occur whether you go forward with the project or not. So if that is the case, why are we including it? We shouldn't be including it. So 
allocated costs should not be included in cash flow analysis. But that is, as I said, that is where you get the biggest fights because, you know, you're dealing with accountants and accountants say, yeah, but we've got to show the P&L for uh, the business model. We've got to show that. And you're saying, yeah, no, but it doesn't affect the cash flow. And really, that, you know, when I deal with companies, this is where you have the, the biggest, um, I, I would say, this is where you have the, the, the biggest conflict or the biggest scope for conflict. My advice is do not use allocated costs. And I'll use this example here. So you have um, a company and it devotes one wing to of its offices to a library. And that library requires 100,000 euros a year in upkeep. Now, this what we've got is we've got a potential project and it's going to generate revenue equal to 5% of overall sales. And you've got the argument here that says, well, okay, since this project's generating 5% of overall sales, we should allocate the cost of the library to this project. Now, that makes sense, doesn't it? You know, it's um, fairly intuitive. Should we include this in our decision to go forward with a project or not? Definitely not, because that expenditure's happening anyway. So you should be ignoring this. And, you know, you should be arguing against the executive here. No, we shouldn't be including it. Whether you win that argument or not, that's that's, that's the case. And that's one of the, the real annoying things about finance, that the whoever shouts the loudest sometimes gets their point across. And although, you know, and, and I have seen this before, um, in a number of times, that the wrong decisions are made in terms of including cash flows just because someone has been very authoritative when they're, when they're speaking or you know they're aggressively or assertively putting a point across and then the team just says yeah okay we'll include that um that you know that you know usually when you're doing a, a business model or some type of investment appraisal it's usually a team that does it so i would say be very careful about including allocated costs do not include them and fight your corner if uh, you've got someone else saying that they should be included. So do not include these. So I've gone through incremental cash flows quite and you know very fast, and hopefully you find this video to be of some use to you uh, in your uh, in your studies. In my next video, I will be looking at an actual capital budgeting analysis. And uh, we'll, I'll be going through the full um, uh, process of doing the capital budget. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you again. Bye.